Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you this free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'll send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and this right here is the Nikon 402.8 TC. This is not a review because this is a pre-production unit. This is more of a first look, hands-on preview, whatever you want to call it, but just don't call it a review because this isn't even announced yet. I don't know when it's going to be announced yet. I can't tell you any specs about this. Will you stop shaking your head over there, Nikon rep? He's like, oh, I'm going to shake my head every time he's hitting a point. I'm going to tell them how much it costs. Is that okay? No, because I don't know how much it costs. Basically, I can't tell you anything. I honestly haven't been briefed on it, but I've been able to take it outside to shoot it on the Nikon Z9. Now, I put the Atomos on it so that you guys can see what's happening when I switch to the teleconverter or just make any changes that I make. But yeah, we use the Z9. I can't let you download the files. We can look at them here and share them with you right here, but you can't download them because this is a pre-production unit. But this isn't about image quality, and to be honest with you, if this lens doesn't produce good image quality, then that is going to be a problem. And honestly, from the sample pictures, it looks really darn good. So let's take a look at this lens. And honestly, the first thing that I noticed when we took it out of the box or the bag was how light it is and how compact it honestly feels. I mean, that's to be expected. Sony's is nice and small. Canon's is also nice and small. And this feels really nice in the hands. And to be honest with you, you probably don't even need to use a monopod the whole time. I mean, when you throw the Z9 on it, that thing weighs a ton. It's like a brick. Uh, that's going to add some extra weight. But just like this, I don't even think I could get a good workout in at all. But the main point about this lens is the fact that it's a 402.8 with a built-in teleconverter. I don't know any other 2.8 lenses in history that have a built-in teleconverter. We've seen it with the 200 to 400 that Nikon originally put out and then Canon put out. We see it with the 180 to 400, but those are F4 lenses lenses with a teleconverter. This is a 2.8 and right here is where the teleconverter is. When you want to put it to 1.4x, you just flick this switch right here and it goes into place. You want to get rid of it, it goes like this. So you have a 402.8. When you flick the switch, that adds the teleconverter. So you multiply by 1.4 and it's 560 millimeters at f4. But you can take it even further with the Z9 by putting it into DX mode, which gives you another 1.5 magnification factor, which takes it out to 840 millimeters still at F4. You're not losing any more light because you're not putting any more optics in there, but you are going down from 45 megapixels to about 24 megapixels. Right here is your manual focus ring. You're probably never going to have to manually focus this lens. I mean, unless there's a case where you do do that. This is the control ring right here. So you can set that to what you want to set it to. Generally, I still turn it off. There's a new ring here that actually looks like a piano. It's like you could play the keys. It has the black keys. It's like all black keys with the other black keys. I don't even know what this is. I'm assuming if I had to guess that it's going to do some kind of control function. Like if you wanted to switch from uh, full frame to DX, maybe you'll be able to do that. I don't know. I haven't been briefed yet. Is that, is that about correct? Anything over there? I'm, I'm not even allowed to get a thumbs up or not. I don't know. But if I had to guess, that's probably what it's going to do. You have all of these buttons out here that you can set and you can program. I personally still never program those. Um, and other than that, you have memory set over here. On this side, you have your manual plus full. You don't control the VR in this lens anymore. You control it in the body of the cameras. But you know what you do have at the end of this lens right here? Steven, can you get this? Yeah. It's a gold ring. Gold ring. Fo phone call. Hello? Oh, it's Madeline K with Nikon PR. Oh, it's a yellow ring? Oh, yeah, that's yellow to you? Yeah, no, that's not yellow, that's gold. I'm not listening to you, go away. You have a gold ring right here. Don't ask me why they think it's yellow because it's reflective, like gold. So this is the top of the lines type of lens. That's what that gold signifies. Are they gonna add it to any of their future 
2.8 lenses? We'll have to wait and see. Oh, and by the way, I've just been holding it upside down like this because it's so feather light. Honestly, it's like, look at this. It's, I didn't even know that I was holding it. That's how light this is. Again, I don't know the exact weight. I can't tell you about focusing motors in here because I don't know anything about it. But when the lens does get announced, we'll probably do a photo news fix and put it in there to give you all of the specs. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this image from the Z9 edited with a bunch of different presets that we've created, starting with Zoolander. Zoolander looks pretty good. Then we've got November Rain. I love how that one looks. Mount Airy is more light and airy. It's kind of the hot thing on the streets right now that a lot of people like. Then we jump up to Almost Famous, which gives you the kind of opposite of light and airy. It gives you a little bit of crunch to it, followed by Fifth Element. Now, those are from Fro Pack 3, but I wanna jump into Fro Pack two and go to matte black high contrast. Matte black high contrast gives you a great look. Double stuffed Oreos is like, wow, look at how good that works out. Followed by Dorothy and then we've got Bob Ross for people. I just wanted to show you Bob Ross for people. And then from Fro Pack 1, being that this was taken in Kensington in Philadelphia, we've got Kensington, and that looks really good. So look, if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, I mean, I just gave you a lot of great starting points with one file. Well, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters, and if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or you could pick up the triple play bundle, which includes all the presets that you just saw me use and then some and that's with fro pack one two and three and you can save a lot more now let's get back to the video in the real world and by real world it was about 18 degrees out today we had dan run a few times at me and i couldn't even tell the thing was focusing on the z9 and i don't mean that in a bad way what i mean by that is it was so smooth and so quick that I didn't notice anything happening when he was running towards me other than it just stayed in focus. And that's what you would expect in a lens like this. And in terms of price, I don't know how much it's going to be. What I do know is that Canons and Sony's are about $12,000. So if I had to guess, am I allowed to guess? I can't see you in the dark, but they were saying no. Anyway, ignore them. If I had to guess, I'm gonna think this is about $50. It's gonna be, in my opinion, more expensive than the other two, but I could be wrong because the Z9 was already less expensive. Just to bring this up one more time, Nikon called me and we're like, hey, we can bring you this lens down. Would you like to get a preview of this pre-production model? If it was honestly anything else other than maybe that 806.3, I probably would have said no, but because this is such a unique lens and the fact that it's a 2.8 with the built-in teleconverter, I figured, yeah, let's go ahead and make a video about it. And when the real version comes out, the full production unit comes out, we'll take it out into the real world and give it a real world review style type of video. We just couldn't tell you anything because honestly, I haven't been briefed yet, but we do have a Nikon person here who's like, you can't really do very much, but hey, I thank Nikon for thinking of us to bring this down to us because I'm not sure that anybody else has their hands on this yet. And the fact that we're allowed to put this video out before they even announce the lens is pretty cool. So thank you Nikon for doing that. Thank you Madeline Kay for thinking of us when doing that. But there are two tests that we are allowed to do and that is the sniff test and the wind tunnel test. Steven, I'm standing it up for the wind tunnel test, all right? Yay. Here we go. Please don't break, please don't break because you're so light. I don't want to huff and puff and have one of those uh, moments where like you're not in Kansas anymore. Here we go. Well, it didn't move. I want to say that it failed the test, but I think that the person from Nikon wouldn't be very happy with that. So it passed the wind tunnel test. Now let's sniff it. Man, what's interesting is if you smell it here, it smells like roses and butterflies. If you smell it here, it kind of smells like my jock strap, which I actually have over here. This is the official jock strap that I've worn as a kid. Ew. And it's, no, this is, it's official. It just hangs out here at the factory all the time. It doesn't smell like a jock strap, okay? It smells like roses and butterflies. Do not yell at me. So that's it, guys. 
I, I can't wait for this thing to come out because I'm interested to see how much it's going to be, but also to get a production unit and use it out in the real world. This would be a fantastic lens to take out to Conowingo Dam to shoot the birds. Why? Because I have a 402.8, and if the birds are at a distance, I can flick to the 1.4 converter and get even more, and then I can go with the DX and go even further. So that is pretty cool. What is your guess for how much you think this lens is going to cost? What would you shoot with this? Let me know down below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.